How did we come to start Gear Gear? Um, I co-founded the company with my good friend Andy Biggs. Andy is a professional African wildlife and safari photographer. I was going to East Africa with him in 2006. We were, you know, going to photograph some of the usual hot spots. We had a lot of gear, so this was obviously well before mirrorless cameras. This was in the peak of the DSLR age, and we were traveling with a couple of pro bodies, 500 f/4s. And you know, a lot of big glass. When you go to uh, to Tanzania, you fly to a place called Arusha, and you, and most flights route through Amsterdam. So what you check in for a flight in the states, fly through Amsterdam, and uh, and head down to East Africa. What that means is when you change planes, you're subject to a gate check in uh, in Amsterdam. At the time, a maximum legal carry-on size camera bag was about ten to twelve pounds. My bags got weighed. The gear's really heavy, and um, you know, it became a, a negotiation with the gate agent to, to get those bags on the airplane. So after, you know, a long, rather spirited conversation, you know, each of us were able to get the bags on the plane and uh, continue on with our trip. Then when we got to Africa, you know, interestingly enough, each of us had a failure. We had zippers blow out. One, the strap burst, and one, the zipper blew out. And so we were sitting around the campfire, drinking a little too much Tusker ale, Talking about uh, talking about the day shooting and complaining about our bags, we thought we could do it better. So got out the proverbial cocktail napkin and started sketching, and we came up with a design that worked for a safari vehicle. Like I said at the time, the, you know, if a maximum legal carry-on size bag was ten to twelve pounds. We set a target for four. That means six to eight pounds of extra gear you can carry in a bag the same size. We did something that was very interesting, and some would call it visionary. I would just call it the stupidity of not having done this before, which is we didn't design from a price point. We designed from a weight target, and so we just used the best materials that we could find. Today in the bag industry, X-Pack is, is a cult classic. It's a highly durable fabric. We were actually the first bag company of any kind to use that material in a bag. It's racing sailcloth. So why sailcloth? Think about it. What's the use case for a sail? It's got to be incredibly weatherproof, weather resistant. It's got to hand up to you know, handle salt water and not deteriorate. It's got to be tear resistant because it captures the wind. And it's got to be lightweight because it's on a racing boat. Those characteristics are exactly what you want in a lightweight camera bag. You want to be weather resistant, you want to be tear resistant, and you want to be lightweight. So we use sailcloth. The sailcloth manufacturers thought we were kind of insane, but uh, today we're on their website as a, as a trusted partner because we've been working with them so long using these materials. Interestingly enough, we went to market in 2009 with the product. We've never had a materials failure. And we took that same design philosophy through into the rest of the materials. The dividers in our bag are very thin, which was cutting edge at the time, and, and we made them thin by using better foams. So we thought about it, you know, what else uses foam? Camera bags do, but you know what else does? Crash helmets. And crash helmets have to protect your head in an impact, which means they are compressing. So the foam in, in crash helmets actually protects more when it's compressed than when it's at its thickest state. And that's the foam we use in our bag. Crash helmets also need to be very weather resistant. The foam needs to not absorb water. And so all of these, we, th we thought outside the box. We thought about use cases that were trying to achieve the same things we were from other industries, and we put them in a bag. We, we had a number of, of innovations like that. We use very light colored material on the inside of our bag so that you can see when you're changing lenses at golden hour. We designed zipper pullers um, so that you could open the bag with gloves on because Andy at the time and I have since followed did a lot of trips to Antarctica. And we made it light and we just kept every design iteration was, you know, how do we take weight out of this? How do we take weight out of this? How do we take weight out of this? And after I've lost count of the number of iterations, but I think it was somewhere between nine and ten. But the bag came in at 3.99 pounds. And today uh, our 30 liter Kiboko is still under four pounds. All of our bags follow that same design philosophy, which is anything we can do to minimize weight and anything we can do to make it as efficient as possible. We are photographers, and we make our products for photographers. And we believe that the details matter, and small details make a big difference. What sets Gergir apart? It's details. Details are what sets us apart. 
We designed our bags to be ultra lightweight and incredibly functional. And we take that design philosophy through in all aspects of our bags. We take those bags and we use them. When we prototype, we use it for months and months and months and we refine and we refine and we refine. We're not a big company. We don't have to drop products every year. We drop products when they're ready because for us, the details matter. It's that, that rigorous attention to detail that makes these the best camera bags on the market. They're incredibly well made, they're incredibly well thought through, and we use them. And we use them every day, and we take what we learn, and we, we constantly improve. Do I use Gurgear products? Well, the answer to that is a resounding yes. Quite selfishly, I make the products I want. I travel, pre-pandemic, I was traveling 285,000 actual flown miles a year which is just an insane amount of travel. That's obviously not only travel for Gura Gear, that's travel for personal photography projects and for other business ventures. What it means is I've spent a lot of time on airplanes, I've spent a lot of time on trains, a lot of time in cars, a lot of times with gear strapped to the back of a yak. I mean, you name it, I've done it. And these are the products that are the result of that. They have an incredible attention to detail and organization. I'm a firm believer in every item should have a home, and then you know where things are, and it allows you to travel more efficiently. The Chobi is a great example of that. It's, a, it's, our, it's our briefcase slash camera bag personal item, your second item that you carry on the airplane. I mean, that's my everyday bag. It's, it's what I use as a business briefcase, and it's what I use as a, as a second camera bag, depending on what I'm doing. It's also my overnight bag when I'm going on a one-night trip. It is purpose-built for the way I live my travel-based life. And I think the lessons from, from that level of travel is something that uh, you, our customers, can benefit from. What is something that Gurgur does better than anyone else? I always hesitate to say we do this better than anyone else because there's a lot of excellent companies out there and with excellent products. But I think our products are better for a couple of simple reasons. They really think about how they're being used. So our Kabuko line of backpacks has our patented butterfly design system, which is two compartments that open in upon themselves. And this allows you to use 1x the footprint of a bag in a confined space. It allows you to only expose 50% of your gear at a time in a dusty or wet environment. It allows you to configure your bag in travel mode and shooting mode. So you can use two mounted cameras at a time, one in each compartment. It allows you to set up a camera system on one side and a small portable studio on another. It allows you to travel with, with camera gear on one side and your clothes on the other, so you only have one bag. It's a very functional system, and, and we take this functional philosophy through in, every, in everything we do. And, and we, we genuinely do not compromise on the details. One of the things I think that we can do because we're a small company, and, and the buck stops with me, frankly, is we don't have to compromise if there's a problem. Um, I'll give you an example. We're filming this in 2022. I got a call from our factory a few weeks ago, and we have a production order in. And they told me that one of the zipper pullers that we spec that we use in our product had a six week backlog and they had a no name brand that they could get in two days to keep production on time. I said no. So I'm willingly taking a six week delay in production to ensure that I don't compromise the quality and integrity of the product, which means I'm going to have to pay more for freight. I probably will have some upset customers regarding back orders, but I'm confident that when they receive their product, they will be happy they waited a little longer because it is the product that they bought. It's not a product where we substituted a cheaper part to hit a production deadline. That's something that we can do as a small business. And we stand behind exactly what we design and we ensure that what we design is what is manufactured.